fulfilled his promise to his father's children. Amen? But even in departing, he made known to his beloved disciple and to his own mother that there was one last thing he needed to take care of. Amen? What better day than Mother's Day to reflect on this most honorable deed of our Lord as he placed his mother's care into the hands of one whom he loved. Amen? Amen. I'm thankful today that even before President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the second Sunday in May as the day wherein we let mother know how much she means to us, or we reflect, we remember how much she meant to us if the Lord has called her home. But even before Wilson thought it not robbery to celebrate mothers, our Savior demonstrated for us a mother's honor. Even in this critical time of him hanging there on the cross. But mothers, we live in a time, we live in a time now, it seems that children have lost the inspiration to honor their parents. Amen? Perhaps you've noticed, as I have, that not many days of the week go by when, wherein the media interrupts our normal activities with breaking news. I'm reminded of the tragedy that broke the news one evening back in 1989. Two infamous brothers, Lyle and Eric Menendez, are to this day serving life sentences for one of the most notorious killings in the United States. These sons fatally shot both of their parents under the false pretense of sexual abuse, an accusation to which prosecutors contended there was no evidence, but that the sons were in fact after their parents' multi-million dollar estate. Amen? Now this heinous crime is just one example of many of how far some of our children have strayed from the Word of God. Even that word that promises longevity if they will but honor both their father and their mother. Amen? In our text, in our text Mary symbolizes the pain experienced by a loving mother who finds herself facing the inevitable. This loving mother is about to witness her beloved son take his last breath. This same mother to whom the angel Gabriel had appeared some 33 years earlier and surprised her with the breaking news that in a little while she would give birth to a child. This would not be an ordinary child, nor an ordinary birth, because Mary was not an ordinary mother. Amen? Imagine the fear that must have gripped her young heart with the sudden appearance of an angel out of nowhere, but even more so at the message delivered by the angel. Nonetheless, Mary's response was, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And that whole series of events that followed would be extraordinary by all accounts. First of all, the child was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit without human intervention. Extraordinary. Instead of the comfort of a nice, cozy hospital room, the, the, this, this birth took place in a lowly animal stable. Extraordinary. Instead of a crib lined with warm, fluffy blankets, his was the animal's feeding trough lined with prickly straw. Extraordinary. Thirdly, of all the married women, that God could have chosen to deliver his only son, yeah. he instead showed favor to a young, unmarried, virgin girl. Right. Extraordinary. Yeah. 
But what strikes me as the most extraordinary pastor is that Mary was chosen to deliver the same child who would also one day deliver her. Yeah, yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah. Some of y'all missed that. Yeah. And now here she stands, the mother of our Savior yeah. at the foot of his cross. The least of her concerns being what will happen to me after my son is gone. Instead, her focus is on her son. And by the same token, Jesus is more concerned about his mother than he is about himself. Amen. It's a known fact that children who truly love and honor their mother places her needs ahead of their own. Can I get a witness? Yes. Now, Bible scholars agree that by this time, Mary is a widow. Otherwise, this three-way dialogue between Jesus, John, and Mary would not have been necessary because Joseph would have been there to take Mary home. End of story. But our text lends itself to two probing questions. Number one, with his earthly mission rapidly coming to an end and time being of the essence, why hadn't Jesus handled this urgent matter long before now? Why hadn't he at some point initiated a family meeting to discuss Mary's care? Why wait until he was on the cross to make this important assignment? Well, Ecclesiastes 3.1 gives us the answer. Solomon declares that there is a proper time and a proper season for everything under the sun. Amen? Amen. Yes. Now, this is an eye-opener for some of us in that if Jesus had to wait for the right time, how is it that we are so impatient? Why do we fail so miserably at waiting on the Lord? All too often, we rush into decisions without waiting to see what the Lord has to say. Amen? And then when our plan fails, we look to him to bail us out. Amen? Saints, we need to learn how to wait on the Lord. How to wait for the right time. He will let you know when it is the right time for whatever decision choir that you have to make. Amen? Now the second question that's drawn from our text is, why John? Why John? What about Jesus' four brothers? He had James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. So why not then leave Mary in James' care? After all, it was customary that in the absence of the oldest son, then the next oldest son would assume responsibility for his widowed mother. John answers that question for us earlier in his gospel. Even having witnessed his performing miracles, after sitting under his teachings about the kingdom of God, and having watched his earthly life from close up, up close and personal, John says in chapter 7, verse 5, that all four of his brothers still doubted, even as he hung on the cross, that he was the Messiah. Acts chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 declares that it wasn't until after his ascension that they were convinced that their brother was indeed the Son of God. Therefore, could we really expect Jesus to place his mother's care into the hands of unbelievers? And then, like Jesus, we too must be careful. We must be prayerful and we must be selective as to whose hands we entrust our mother's care, yeah. especially as they advance in the aging process. Yes. Now, I know this doesn't happen over here in Chatham County, but over in Durham County, where we live, right. there are way too many mothers uh -huh. who should be enjoying their golden years. Yeah. 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 But instead, they are feeling alone and abandoned uh -huh because their sons and their daughters, and yes, even their grandchildren, 
have placed them into facilities, mother, and being so busy with their own lives, they no longer take time to call, visit, or otherwise come and check on their mother's baby. Now clearly, John was a man of meager fare. Not being gainfully employed, he was unable to provide for Mary anything remotely close to an elaborate lifestyle. Luke 8, 3 says that he lived on donations, just like Jesus and the other disciples. Amen? But Jesus was more concerned for his mother's spiritual welfare than he was with any concern from backlash from critics about why he made the decision. He wasn't concerned about family ties. He was concerned about his mother's spiritual yeah, welfare. Amen. Even her financial security was secondary to her spiritual wellness. And because of his relationship with Jesus, John's <coughs> spiritual acuity, in other words, his spiritual insight, qualified him as the only one whom Jesus knew that he could trust his mother, and to trust to do right by his mother. Amen? We've got some folk in our family that if something were to happen to our mother, we would step in and take, take their place because they're not the ones to handle my mom. Amen? Yes, yes, Amen? Yes, Let's keep it real. So in honoring our mothers, let us be careful, my brothers and sisters, that we don't end up majoring in the minor things regarding their care. While it is prudent, to make provisions for her physical wellness, we must take care of first things first. Right. Amen? Amen? As we follow the example of our Lord, let me offer to you, and I'm going to be short, I'm going to be brief, but let me just offer this to you first and foremost, that if your mother is still with you, and you are the least bit concerned that spiritually, she might not be in a good place, in other words, in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, I urge you to make it your business. Don't wait on your siblings. Don't wait on anybody else to introduce your mother to Jesus Christ. Amen? Understanding that none of the material things that you provide for her comfort will matter in the long term as much as where she will spend eternity. Amen? Jesus said himself in Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Now, realistically, we understand that there may come a time when you have to entrust your mother into someone else's care. We get that. Amen? Amen, amen. If you ask God and wait for his answer, he will lead you to those caregivers who not only honor him, but will in turn therefore honor your mother and will take care of her. I have a sister who works at the Bryan Center in Durham, and she can come home with some stories that you would believe go on in these nursing homes with our parents. Amen? So we have to be mindful, we have to be prayerful, and we have to be careful, because as we age, so are our parents aging. And at some point, we're going to have to make decisions as children, we're going to have to make decisions as grandchildren, what to do with her. It's not always convenient, it's not always practical for her to move in with us, but at the same time, we are responsible for her care. Who cared for you when you couldn't care for yourself? Amen? Who wiped your, who wiped your diaper when you couldn't wipe it for yourself? Who cleaned your snotty nose when you couldn't wipe it for yourself? We owe a debt of gratitude to our mothers, to our parents in general, but we're just going to keep it with the moms today, amen? But we owe a debt of gratitude to our mothers. They have been through so much. Some had to wipe the toilets and scrub the floors of people who don't even look like us in order for us to have a meal on the table. So God is not pleased when we put our parents in these places and forget about them. This is for somebody here today. I don't know, but God gave me this message for a reason. Amen. Amen. 
so we have to be careful. And if you ask God about the decisions, don't go ahead of Him, but He will lead you yes, where you need to be. Yes. Amen. 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 Jesus and His mother mm -hmm. faced a very critical time. Yes. If you want to truly honor your mother as our Lord did, in preparation for what will one day be her critical time, yeah, yeah. let me remind you as I prepare to take my seat that now, today, mm -hmm. is that critical time. Yes, yeah. Scripture teaches us that not even the angels know That's right. when the King of yeah. Glory will return. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God has reserved that detail for him. Therefore, every day, every day. Yes. is a critical yeah. day. Yeah. Every day is a day of decision. Yes. Not only your mother, but if you mm. are here, and you happen to be a mother yourself, mm -hmm. amen, yeah. and you are not sure of your own relationship with Jesus Christ, yeah. I urge you not to leave here today. Don't you go another minute without asking Jesus to come into your life and save you cleanse you from your sins, Amen. cleanse you from your unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not too late. Today is the day of decision. Amen. And to take that a step further, if your children don't have a relationship with Christ, Amen. Proverbs 22, 6 says that as a parent, you are responsible. Amen? Amen. For making sure that your child know who the Lord is. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's a responsibility. It's not only a, a privilege of, of getting gifts on Mother's Day and getting out the children showing you all the love, but there's a responsibility even before that Amen. that we have to our children if we are mothers. Even if we even if we are just in the lives of someone acting as a mother, there's a responsibility. <coughs> and God does not take that responsibility lightly. Amen. Amen. God honors motherhood. Yes, he honors motherhood. Why do you think he used the fruit of Sarah's womb to fulfill his promise to Abraham? So mothers, know today that you are the apple of God's eye. Yeah. He wants to give you the most elaborate home that you could ever want to spend eternity. Amen. That is up there with him and all those godly mothers who went before us. Amen. 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 Amen.